Well, hello everybody. It's Jimmy from Stewart Arts, and uh, today I want to talk about croquet. And uh, I've always been attracted to these croquet sets. Um, I go to the flea markets and yard sales, and uh, if I see a neat old set, I'll buy them. And uh, just to kind of talk about these a little bit, you know, there's like two kinds of croquet. There's the snooty kind that gets played at places like PGA National, where you have like a putting green sort of surface. And then there's backyard croquet, uh, which is the kind that I played as a kid in California. And uh, I bet we only played five or seven times ever. I think we did have a set of these things. And what I remember is that uh, the kids could never finish a game. You know, we'd end up uh, throwing the balls at each other or chasing each other around with the mallets. And then we'd lose interest and then the, the mallets and the balls and everything would sit out all night until dad had to do the yard work or we did the yard work and then we we pick them up and put them away uh, so they became weathered and you know they didn't get used very much it's like a fourth of july thing and uh, here in florida it's a not a great sport uh, for backyard because everybody has either the saint augustine or floritam grass which is a very coarse type of grass and it's the worst possible uh, putting type surface for croquet so Nobody plays croquet. Here they play cornhole. That's the big thing here in Florida. Two, three, four bucks. I buy the whole set, uh, the balls, the mallets, everything. I bring it here and uh, I've uh, used the elements of these things uh, because I just love the appearance of them. Uh, like this one is really nicely weathered here. A uh, little bit of the paints. I mean, you can tell what it is, but uh, there's not much of it left. Here's one that's a little bit newer. And the other thing is that there's like no two of these sets that are alike. They're all unique. And so I've made a lot of things out of these and uh, I have kept all the little bits and pieces. And so I got an idea yesterday of what I could do with uh, some of these. Like here's a fragment of a mallet and uh, I'm just gonna show you a few of the things that, that uh, I've done with them. And then I'm gonna do a real quick video on, on uh, one thing that, uh, that I've done with these little mallets. So I hope you enjoy. Well, here's a piece I did maybe uh, 20 years ago now, and uh, this is probably from two or three different sets. Well, the balls are all from the same set, but I just drilled out the balls and uh, made it into this geometric shape, and it's just kind of a neat sculpture. I really like the way that this turned out, and uh, I'll probably make some more of these. At the time I did this, I did not have a good drill press, and so I just kind of eyeballed it. I squeezed the balls in the vise there, and. Uh, uh, just uh, drilled them out with a spade bit and they came out pretty good. Here's another thing I made uh, out of an old croquet set. Uh, <clears throat> my wife, she's about five foot nothing and uh, so she needed a little something in the kitchen. So I took some mallets and the shafts and made this nice little footstool. So she uses this thing all the time. I made several more too and I gave them all away as gifts. Obviously this was a mallet head here and uh, I turned this up last night and I just made it into a little canister and uh, kind of looks neat. Um, it's a little bit vertical. It's got a flat bottom to it, uh, but I'll probably do one uh, that has a, a ring on the bottom to give it a little bit of stability and then maybe a little finial for the top. But I, I really like the way that these come out. It really looks kind of cool. This is a different mallet head that looks similar to the one I was just working on. Here I'm just parting off a piece that will become the top for the canister.
I've flipped the top around here and I'm just uh, making an estimation as to how far I have to bore this so that it'll have a nice close fit with the bottom. Now for the top I like to use a small skew to define the inside diameter and then I've got this hollowing tool here that I'm going to use to hollow the top out. I won't be using the Forstner bits for the top. Getting a nice snug fit of the top is a trial and error process. I will go back and forth uh, cutting and trying and cutting and trying probably a half a dozen to ten times to get it just right. Well that fits really well. That's uh, probably uh, the better fit of the two of these I've done so far. Well, I've got some golden pecan here, and I don't have any clue what this is going to look like, but uh, we'll give it a shot. We'll be an expert after we do this. Oh, actually, that looks pretty good. It blends in very nicely with this wood. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be real good. That's almost an exact match uh, for what this was to begin with, so I think that's... Uh, I'm very lucky there. Who wants pizza bones? You want the, pizza? the only complaint I have about this is that these are both a little bit unstable uh, vertically. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make a base for each of these. So I've cut tenons on the bottom of each of these and I'm going to make a little receiving mortise on each of the tops of these and I'll turn these down on the, the lathe. So I'll spare you that. This is really not a, a lathe turning video so much as a what cool stuff you might do with croquet parts video. So I'll be back uh, with completed bases. Well these are all done. Um, this one I uh, decided to uh, put a uh, an oak base on it. I, I like the light color and I'll tell you this wood sure turns nicely. I've only used this this wood a couple of times. It was from an old flooring panel and uh, I liked it so much that um, even though I have uh, something like 20 finials that I have made uh, uh, for different things. Uh, I went ahead and made uh, an oak one just to match the base here. So I think this one turned out pretty cool and good fit on the lid there and uh, so that one's done and good enough to sign. And then the other one here, uh, this one I put a African mahogany base on it and uh, just to give it a little weight uh, so it doesn't knock over easily and uh, once again the top has a good fit to it. Well that's it for this video. I sure hope you'll leave me a comment and a like. Um, and uh, if you're not a subscriber, well, I sure hope you'll push that subscription button. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.